A warm welcome to VTU eShikshana eLearning Center. In this video, we are going to continue the module number 3 of ANN, Artificial Neural Network Subject, Statistical Learning Theory, Support Vector Mechanism and Radial Basis Function Networks. So just we are going to see about the recap of the previous class. We have come across the statistical learning theory and we have come across support vector machines. In the support vector machines, the numeric optimization yields the optimized uh, lag range multipliers as well we come across with the optimal weights and bias. So optimal bias computed from the complementary conditions as we are aware about that usually it's going to average to the overall supported vectors and which is going to be a linear uh, indicator functions. So in this class we are going to continue about the MATLAB code which is going to be for the SVM applied to a linearly separable data. As we are aware about that the MATLAB code is implemented for a support vector machine on a linear separable data set. So as we have been seen over here as x is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 1, 1.5. So as like that we are going to see about that. Here we are going to do with the data points and the corresponding classes have been get defined which consisting of a set of data set and the threshold for this checking support vectors have been mentioned over here. And with the help of the initialization the essence matrix, we are going to set up the essence matrix. As well, we are going to come across about the parameters for the optimization problem. So the optimization parameters are going to be mentioned as the number of equality constraints, the uh, equality constraints as was the lower bound of the lambdas, which is going to be mentioned as is equal to zero and the upper bounds and initial points we are going to keep it as zero. With the help of that we, we, can, we are going to invoke the MATLAB standard up, uh, function which is going to be for QP function for the quadratic optimization. So in this quadratic optimization we are going to have the constraints as specified in the above and we are going to have the support vector and the number of support vectors also going to be get initialized over there with the length and we are going to have a optimal bias which is going to be present over here. We first define the x value that is going to be the most important thing. We define the x samples in the rows of the matrix x and which are going to be corresponding to the each data points which are going to be corresponding to each data points. So the desired class is indicated in the vector d, vector d, the size of the data set is going to be stored in the point q that's going to be present in this point Q. So a small threshold which is going to be epsilon is going to be defined for the deduction of support vector so that the H matrix is going to be formed by the linear product or linear inner products of the data point which is going to be multiplied into their respective classes. So the main objective of this function which is going to be used in the MATLAB program is therefore we are going to make that A is equal to minus 1 plus half of a to the power of t h a with the constraint of a into d that is going to be taken it assumed as 0 for this quadratic optimization objective function which is going to be get formatted as f to the power of t a plus of a t h a which is going to be giving the equality constraints of a i of a is equal to b where i is equal to 1 to m. And in this equality function, if you are going to see about this, in this equality function, which is going to be uh, taken into the ith row of the matrix A. In other words, we can say that the constraints are provided to the program in the form of a matrix equation that is going to be A is equal to B, where we have no inequal constraints. So that we got the rid of them in the lag arranging formulation. And there is an exactly one uh, equality constraint will be get present over there. We will see about that equality constraint by using the simulation results. In accordance with this details, we can set f is equal to minus ones of q comma i or q comma one. So the number of equality constraints which are going to be taken as the number constraints is equal to one. So that the matrix A is equal to d dash with only one row since there is 
only one constraint and b is equal to 0. So before optimizing, we need to set the upper and lower bounds for each of the lag range multipliers. If you are going to see about this program, we have seen that the upper bounds and initial points have been specified over there. This is the way it is going to be present over there. This is going to be specified in q into 1 cons column vector which is going to be called as vub set which is going to be taken as v1b set to initial uh, uh, infinity and 0 respectively. And initial point x0 that is nothing but initial point x0 is going to be specified to 0 over there. So by performing the optimization heals the optimized lag range multipliers vector lambda. So the value of the particular function at the minimum and the optimal status so that we are constrained only with the lag range multiplier vector lambda at this moment. So finally note that the decision region calculation requires the lambda value over there. So this lambda h and the optimal bias so that we need not we need uh, now it is going to be an optimal bias is going to be get present over there. So this is done by averaging the overall value averaging the overall support vector as discussed in the earlier stage such a way we are going to make it out so that SV index is going to be present over SV index is equal to find lambda where is going to be greater than epsilon value so support vector is going to be initialized over there and whereas the S index or SV index uh, stores all indic uh, in indicates of lambda greater than 0 which is going to be taking the support vector value. Whereas ns is the number of support vectors and the rest is simply a straightforward implementation of the above equations which have been specified in the prior class. So now we run the MATLAB code which is going to be mentioned in this particular steps after appending an appropriate plotting segment we are going to get a graph which is going to be present like this. The simulation is going to be present like this. Here the figure the class 1 data, a rectangle data which is going to be present over there, the rectangular data are going to be get specified over here. We can see this rectangular data. This uh, rectangular data, class 1 rectangular data and class 2 star data. So this is going to be a star data. Class 2 star data are going to be get present over there. So rectangular data and star data are going to be get present over there which have been plotted against a shaded background which is indicating the magnitude of the hyperplane. A large negative values are going to be shown as a black value which is going to be shown as a black in color. A large positive values are going to be get shown in the white in color, in the side the white in color. The class separating the boundary which is going to be providing a solid line which is going to separate the white and black shaded boundary. Along with this, a margin, a dotted line is also going to be shown over there. So this four support vectors are going to be visible over here. One, two, three, four support vectors are going to be visible over here. As well as here also the four support vectors are going to be get visible over there. So this intersection which is going to be shown over there in this particular diagram. So if you are going to see about that the intersection of this hyper plan and the indicator function which is gives the class separating boundaries and the margin. So, these are also indicated by a counter lines. So, these four are going to be taken as a counter lines. Such a way we are going to make it out. The result is going to be portrayed in this particular figure which are going to be shown over there in this. So, the data points from these two classes are going to be plotted. The solid white line shows the position of the separating boundary between the two classes. The solid line which is going to show the separate the boundaries of these two lines. Here also if you are going to see about the solid line which is going to be present, the white space is going to be segregated like this. Okay, now. So the data point from these two classes are going to get plotted over here. So the separate boundary between these two classes are going to be mentioned clearly in this one. And the dotted lines which are going to show about the particular counters. So note the four support vector which is going to be lies on this particular counters. So also, the background has been shaded in gray scale to reflect the values of the hyperplane, where the large negative values are going to be shaded black in color. The large negative values are going to be shown in a black in color. Understand? 
it's going to be shaded in the gray scale to reflect the values of the hyperplane where the large negative colors are going to be shaded in the black color and a large positive values are going to be shown shaded in the a uh, white color this is going to be an a uh, white color okay so the hyperplane is so oriented such that it intersects the indicator function at a value of plus or minus 1 which are indicated by the dotted counter on which the support vectors lie. This is further classified into three dimensional portraitable figure which have been shown over here in this particular thing. This is going to be a three dimensional diagram which have been ported over here. Understand? So, coming to the next one, simulation results. From this what we are going to understand about that. The details of this linearly separable data for this support vector and the Lagrange multiplier values are going to be after optimization the values are going to be like this. The class which is going to be specified over there. So keep this insightful picture in your mind. Check the value of the Lagrange multiplier LMs in the particular table which have been mentioned over here. There are four non-zero LMs corresponding to the four support vectors. So, the total margin is going to be uh, 0.67 that is going to be present over here. So, the details of this linear separable data which have been shown after optimization in this particular diagram. So, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 data points presence in the class minus 1, support vector is going to be no, lambda value is going to be 0, 0. 0 0.5 to 1 which have minus 1 class there is no support vector which is going to be 0, 0. And we are going to see about that. The only value which is consisting of a support vector which is going to be start from this particular thing. 1, 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 2, 2, 1.5. So, which is going to fall a class of minus 1 and plus 1 and which consisting of a sector, so uh, vector value, support vector value which is going to be present over here 2.664, 1.780, 1.775, 2.669. Such so, anyway, a way it is going to have this particular values over there. So, this details of this linear separable data which consisting of this lag multiplier value after optimization which have been mentioned in this particular table. Let me see about the soft margin hyperplane classifier. The soft margin hyper plane classifier which has a non-linear separable data. So, in this non-linear separable case which is one that is most often encountered in practice that is the way it is going to be get understand in an appropriate way. So, which is going to provide a non-separable class the class overlaps. In this case the constraints d i of x i dot w plus w naught minus 1 which is going to be greater than or equal to q which cannot be satisfied for all data points. So, the optimization procedure will attempt to go on increasing the dual lag, uh, lag, lag, Lagrangian to attributable large values which is going to be present over here. So, the optimization procedure will go on increasing the dual Lagrangian to the arbitrary larger value. So, that what happened? The solution for this is nothing but permit the algorithm to misclassify some of the data points which is going to be albent with an increased cost and a soft margin is generated within which all the misclassified data are going to be lie. In such a way, it has to be get present over here. So, coming to this, a soft margin classifier, in fact, the AI value which, are, which is going to be for the misclassified points goes on increasing in order for those data points to be the ones that will extra extract a greater influence on the points or the position of the decision boundary in an attempt to have them classified correctly. Therefore, the way to go about performing the optimization is to permit the algorithm to misclassify some of the data points but which have been increased in the cost. In other words, we can say that a soft margin is going to be generated as shown in this figure within which all the misclassified data are going to be lie over here. So, if you can see about that all the 
uh, triangle data class 1 data are going to get present over here and all the star data of class 2 data are going to get present over here. So, a soft margin classifier which permits the data point to lie within the margin and to be misclassified. As per this diagram, we can come to know about that which is going to be allowing the data point to lie within the margin and to be misclassified. So, coming to the next one, a slack variable. What is a slack variable? These ideas are incorporated into a optimal margin algorithm which is going to be described for the linearly separable case by introducing a slack variable. A slack variable which is going to be taken into the data where uh, it can be a constraints which are going to be present as follows like this as w dot x plus the value which is going to be deals about minus 1 of the slack variable where dA is equal to plus 1 whereas this value is going to be lesser than that of the slack, uh, slack variable where dI is equal to minus 1. Such a way this is going to be get present over there. So, here the data point is going to be misclassified if the correspondent slack variable exceeds the unity. So, that the slack variable summation of the slack variable which is going to represent an upper bound on the number of misclassifications. Such a way it is going to be get measured over here mentioned in this particular way. Coming to the cost function. We can easily see that this allows the strict constraints to be relaxed where a specific data point is going to be misclassified if the corresponding slack variable exceeds the unity value. So, notice that therefore, the summation of this slack variable provides an upper bound on the number of classification errors which can be included into the objective function of an extra cost which is required to be get minimized. So, that we are going to make the optimization problem which is going to be get modified with a minimum cost. So, the optimization problem that gets modified to the following form. This is going to be called as 1 of 1 over 2 which is going to be having a modulus of w and which is going to be providing the cost of this particular summation of the slack variable which is going to be given over here. Subject to this constraints which are going to minimize still this value when it is going to be and the slack variable is going to be equal or greater than 0 value. Such a way we are going to make this cost function to be get minimized. Let me see about some of the important things what we have to understand about this particular thing. Here the parameter c, the cost where c is a parameter that assigns a penalty to the misclassification. So, a c is a parameter that assigns a penalty to the misclassification by choosing the value k is equal to 1 to make the problem quadratic optimization problem. We are going to make k is equal to 1 to make the problem it should be a quadratic function. Okay, So, for that quadratic optimization problem we are going to choose k is equal to 1. With this advantage at uh, that neither uh, slack variable nor this lag range multiplier appears in the dual formulation, we, we can minimize this particular value with the VC dimensions while maximizing the margin value. And meanwhile, the user can choose the constraint C which provides, which provides C which provides a particular trade off between the VC dimension and the imperial risk by changing the relative weight of the two terms in the objective function. So, therefore, we are going to take this, the weights of the two terms are going to be get present over here, which is going to be deal with the objective function. So, this therefore implements the SRM on this given set of functions in a practical way. Okay, so, that we are going to make this into a practical way, the imperial risk by changing the relative functions of this two particular term into an objective function which is going to set a function in a practical way. Such a way we are going to make this particular support vector mechanism. Moving on to the next one, Lagrangian in uh, perimal variable. So, to solve this reformulated optimization problem, we first construct the Lagrangian in uh, primal 
value variables so the primal variables are going to be mentioned over there as lp of this particular function which is going to be dealt over there with this particular parameter the cost value we have been taken over here okay now the slag variable the cost of slag variable is going to be mentioned and which is going to be defined in this particular way which is going to be the actual value which is going to be get given over there in the primal variable functions move on to this some of the definitions so the lagrange multiplier vectors corresponding to this constraint which is going to be given as like this values which have been given over the lambda 1 comma comma lambda q to the power of transpose in where lambda i is greater than or equal to 0 which is going to have this particular lagrange multiplier vectors corresponding to this particular constraints so that we formulate the optimization problem in a dual uh, space and invoke the particular uh, conditions for this optimum. So at the particular conditions of this optimum value, we are going to get the intermediate results. So at this uh, saddle point, the, part, the, the partial derivations with respect to the primal variables must vanish over there. Therefore, we are going to have the value, the partial derivatives with this respect to this primal variable must vanish at the saddle points. So that we have the data should be present as like that. So which is going to be present in this particular parameters. So where we are going to see about this particular parameter, the d value which is going to be mentioned over here, which is going to be taken as d1, d2, dq to the power of transpose as before. In addition to this particular complementary conditions must be satisfied over there. So to satisfy this complementary conditions, we are going to take about the particular Cohen trucker complementary conditions. So these are the values which have been mentioned over there. This expression which is going to deal about this, which is going to take the i values equal to 1, comma 2, comma etc. up to q. By substituting this value Finally, they are going to yield this expression, which is going to provide the particular complementary condition, which is going to be dealt over there. So that we recast this into the matrix form. So as already we have uh, decided, already we have been discussed about this matrix form and we are going to get this recast constraint into this particular expression. So here essence matrix, matrix as elements which consisting of the elements of hij is equal to di comma dj of xi into xj that is going to be the actual value which is going to be provided for this complementary conditions so let me discuss about the dual optimization problem to obtain the soft margin hyperplane classifier so we uh, we we should solve the dual optimization problem where which is to be get maximized with the particular level. So the maximum level which have been taken into this previous expression and with respect to this Lagrange multiplier subject to the particular constraints, we are going to take that into is equal to 0 as already I have specified that we are going to consider this value to be 0. So it is going to be get present where this is going to be an a Lagrange value may be greater than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to c1 the cost of that so where once again i'm going to say that this zero may be o comma o1 comma o2 comma to the power of transpose value will be present over there to this particular value such a way this optimization problem the data optimization is going to be get present over there coming to this optimal vector optimal weight uh, vector we might have already noticed that the Lagrange dual form for this non-separable case is going to be identified that of the separable case, the separable, uh, non-separable case is going to be identified that of the separable cases. Already we have been identified this in the previous class. So the non-separable uh, case is identified that of the separable case of none of the slack variables or their Lagrange multipliers which is going to appear with the difference that the Lagrange multiplier is going to be have an upper bound C. This is going to be now a more straightened case which is going to be get discussed over here. So that no slag variables or their 
Lagrange multiplex appears so that it is going to be present on the upper bound of C. This is going to be more straightened case which is going to be discussed over there. So, from that what we are going to do now, we are going to assume that the numeric optimization which is going to yield the optimized Lagrange multiplier. We may compute the optimal weight vector W from the above expression which have been seen over there. So, that the, we can assume the difference of this Lagrange multiplier which is going to be an upper bound of C so that we can compute the optimal weight vector. So, Lagrange dual, uh, sorry, assume that the numeric optimization which is going to be healed an optimized Lagrange multiplier so that we can compute the optimal vector W from the particular expression which have been seen in the previous slide. So, that the Lagrange dual for this non-separable case is going to be identical to that of the separable case. So, no slag variables or their Lagrange multipliers are going to appear. Difference is nothing but a Lagrange computes now have an upper bound of C so that we can compute the weight vector, optimal weight vector W dash is equal to summation of lambda i di and xi. So, from that we are going to take the value as lambda k dk and xk is going to be the value which is going to be there. Whereas, above the sub support vector will have a non-zero Lagrange multipliers and therefore, the sum of overall q data point can be reduced to being computed over only the n value. So, the support vectors are going to be only with the ns, ns value. So, the index k runs over support vectors only with this particular k value. So, ns is going to be taken as a support vectors value from this data. Okay. So, therefore, we are going to say that the sum of overall q data points can be reduced to being computed over only the support vector ns. So, that the index k runs over support vectors only though. So, lambda k, dk or hk, xk is going to be uh, runs over the support vectors. Such a way we are going to make the optimal weight vector for this particular support vector mechanism. Move on to the next one. So, we are going to make the complementary function already constraints we have come across over there which leaves us with the computation of the bias. So, before we discuss this we can come to know about the following expression are going to be in order. Just recall that from the application of this complementary conditions for a non-separable case we know this data value which have been given over there. So, we have been taken this values clearly and we know for a support vector lambda i is must be greater than or equal to 0 and lambda i plus gamma i is equal to c the cost function. For all the support vectors we have we know that a i must be greater than 0, a i must be greater than 0, is not it or not? So, that however, for the complementary conditions in the above equation lambda i is going to be greater than 0 which implies that the constraints of d i of w dot x i vector weight vector weight matrix dot x i plus w naught minus 1 plus the slag range is equal slag variable is equal to 0. So, which is going to be satisfied exactly such a way we are going to satisfy this particular complementary conditions. Moving on to the next point bounded and unbounded support vector. So, as we are aware about that the satisfied conditions of for this uh, previous thing we are going to continue the next topic which is going to be called as bounded and unbounded support vector. There are two equations. First, must assume that the slag variable is equal to 0, which means that the support vector is on the margin. So, this implies from the equation with another complementary conditions that gamma i is greater than 0, which shows that the lambda i is equal to is uh, lesser than that of the cost function. So, in other words, we can say that the support vector on the margin 
is going to be greater than or lambda is going to be greater than 0 or it may be lesser than the c value. This vectors are therefore called as unbounded support vector. This is going to be called as unbounded support vector. Okay. So, when the lambda i value is going to be 0 or greater than 0 or it may be lesser than c value. This condition is going to be called as unbounded support vector. Understand this is going to be called as unbounded support vector. On the other hand, we can say that if it is an option 1, we are going to assume that one. Second option, the second one, second option, when the slag variable is going to be greater than 0, which implies the gamma value is equal to 0, which implies the lambda i is equal to c, as we are aware about that lambda is equal to c. So, this means that the support vector between this margin have their Lagrange multiplier equal to that of the bound C, equal to that of the bound C. Hence, we can say that such kind of, this means that the support vector between the marginal have their Lagrange multiplier which is equal to that of the bound C. So, that this conditions are going to be called as bounded support vector. This is going to be called as bounded support vector. Hope you people have understood about that bounded and unbounded support vector. So, when the value of lambda i is equal to lies in between 0 to c more than or greater than 0 less than c this is going to be called as unbounded support vector whereas the marginal value lambda is going to be equal to the top c or which is going to be lies in between lies in between the slag range value and the c then that is going to be called as bounded support vector bounded support vector okay so the bound value which defines with respect to the c value when this lambda i is going to be lesser than that of c it's an unbounded when it's going to be equal to c it's going to be called as bounded understand so, move on to the next one, computation of the bias. With the help of that, we are going to compute the bias value. We can calculate the bias for this weight matrix by averaging the over unbounded support vectors. So, that this yields an average over unbounded support vectors which can be get described as this particular expression which consisting of a particular value which is going to have a support vector summation of the support vector values. So, that where the ns value is going to be the number of unbounded support vectors within the Lagrange multiplier which is going to satisfy the condition of the lambda i is going to be greater than or equal to 0 and which is going to be less than or equal to c such a value is going to be get satisfies that is going to be called as an unbounded support vector averaging the overall unbounded support vector values. So, finally, uh, we can give an unknown data point x which can be taken any x value un un unknown data x. One can classify it using an indicator function how the indicator function which is going to be works that works on a hyper plan. So, that the unknown data point can be classified using the indicator function. So, that the indicator function is going to define about the sign of summation of this support vector data along with this it is going to be showing that one. So, where the sum is going to be taken over the n support vector since the remaining data points this remaining data points will have a 0 lakh range multipliers and x is going to be classified as c1 or c2 depends upon whether x uh, f of x sorry y of x is equal to plus 1 or y of x is equal to minus 1 depends upon this value we can make it we can classify x is equal to c1 or x is equal to c2 so when x is equal to c1 that is nothing but y of x is equal to plus 1 Okay, when x is equal to c2, so that y of x is equal to minus 1. Such a way it is going to be defined over there. Such a way we are going to compute this bias.
the BIOS is going to be computed in such a way. Let me see about a yeah, MATLAB code for this non-separable classes which is going to be consisting of a linear support vector machine. Uh, let me move on to this uh, uh, MATLAB code and its simulations for the linearly non-separable case. The code which is going to be identical to that of a linear separable case with two minor changes which have been made over there. The first value of this Lagrange multiplier are now been unbound and been bounded and a control parameter C is going to be introduced. So we are going to introduce a control parameter over there. So C is going to be get introduced at the upper bound value. Second one, the BIOS is going to be computed over unbounded support vector rather than that of them. So these two points are clear from the code which have been given over here. Okay. So if you are going to see about these two codes where we have been come across over there. So we have given the upper bound value and we have given the C value which is going to be present over there. In such a way the values the code has been written over here. So such a way the code is going to be providing its simulations. Okay. So as we are aware about that the simulation by simulating this value this MATLAB code we are going to get the value. The difference from this linear separable data set has been shown in this particular figure over here is that the classes for the data point 3 and 5 have been interchanged making the data set linearly non-separable, linearly non-separable. If you can see about the same data set is going to be lying in the linear separable case except for the classes of data point 3 and 5, classes of data point 3 and 5. 5. So, this is going to be the data point 1 and this is going to be the data point another 2. So, these two are going to be having a minor changes which is going to get present over you. So, the interchanged which have been sorry which have been interchanged between these two ends from the triangular is going to be present over there which have been changed into this side and the particular uh, star has been moved towards the white space beyond the boundary line which have been mentioned over here and which makes a problem of non-separable which makes the interchange to make the problem of non-separable data. So the number of support vector is now 6. There are 2 are unbounded and 4 are being bounded. Okay. So 2 are unbounded, 4 are to being bounded. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are bounded and this is going to be unbounded. I can change the color so that it can be easy for you people to understand. This is unbounded. Okay. This is unbounded. Both are going to be unbounded and remaining all are going to be bounded. Okay. So, if you are going to see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are going to be present over there. So, 6 are going to be bounded, 2 are going to be unbounded which is going to get present over here. So, the same data set as in this linear separable case but with the classes of data point 3 and 5 are interchanged to make the problem of non-separable and the number of support vectors is now 6 with 2 are going to be being unbounded okay and remaining 4 are going to be get bounded. So if you are going to see about that 2 are going to be present like this. So if you are going to see about that we can use the particular uh, data the simulated output, we use the value c is equal to 5 as indicated in the MATLAB code. So now we can notice that the width of the margin has been increased and the sector, the uh, particular bounded vector that are being misclassified now lie within the margin. It is going to be insightful to take a look at the value of the Lagrange multiplier for each of the data points shown in this particular table. So the table shows the linear non-separable data set, Lagrange multiple values after optimization and the type of support or not uh, or non-support vector data. So, okay. so note that here uh, as we are going to aware about that the data points 0 0.5, 0 0.5 presents on minus 1, it is a non-support vector and which is going to be lying 0, a non-support vector. And 0.51 which is going to be a support vector of value 0 0.4, it is a bound unbounded one. And 
two are unbounded, four are bounded, and two are non-supportive data, which have been clearly mentioned over here. So, if you want to see about that, you can come to know about that. 2.5 at 2.5, it's a not bounded value. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, not bounded value. Remaining all are going to be this non-support vector. This is bounded one. These two are not bounded one. Such a way, it's going to be get present in this particular data value. Okay. Now, non-support vector value lambda is equal to zero. So, the data point of this margin have unbounded Lagrange multiplier, which is going to be lies between zero and C, is equal to five. So, lambda value is equal to five, and the data point within the margin, which is going to have lambda is equal to C that is equal to 5.0 such a way it is going to be get represent in this particular value. Move on to the next one towards the non-linear support vector machines. We now know that the complementary of this optimal hyperplan can be controlled independently on the dimension of the pattern which have been uh, called as space, space pattern which can yield a good generalization even in high dimensions, even in high dimensions. However, up, upon this particular points which have been present over there, which is going to be uh, only a linear direction, de linear decision functions, so which have been considered in the pattern space, which will not be good enough for a large number of applications. So that now I am going to discuss about the method of designing a support vector machine that has a non-linear decision boundary. So, our idea is going to be an inner product kernel. Our idea we are going to process over is nothing but inner product kernel. So, which is going to define about the linear SVM as directly extendable to the non-linear SVMs using an amazingly simple technique which is going to be based on the notations that is going to be called as inner product kernel, inner product kernel. That way we are going to make this one. Okay. So, let me see about the future space map, how it is going to be present with the inner product kernels and a non-linear support vector machines. In other words, we can say that uh, we map the inner uh, input vector x using a map that is going to be uh, taken into a condition of an high def, a high di dimensional feature space h. If I am going to apply that one which is going to map into an every i dimensional features of the particular space h. So, that what happen this value is going to be turns into such a parameter which is going to be given into a equation like this which emphasize the mapping into a feature space could be done using an infinite number of future variables. This is portrayed in the particular diagram. I will show the diagram. This is the way it is going to be shown over there. I will explain about this later. Prior to that, we will come to this point. Then we will go that. Okay. So, instead of working in the particular x space, we are work in a future space h by applying the ideas of the soft margin of this support vector machines classifiers using the value of the particular pi of x in the place of x. Pi of x is going to be placed in the place of x. Using the particular map, the final linear decision function can be uh, changed or it can be uh, formed in a different way. How in the sense that is going to be taken, which is already a, a decision boundary is going to be present in the space as y of x is equal to sin of summation of the support vector which consisting of this value. We are going to replace the x value in terms of pi of x that is going to be present over here. Such a way we are going to map everything back to the original pattern space. Such a way we are going to make into this particular original pattern space. That is going to be the basic idea behind the feature of space maps. Okay. Let me see how actually it is going to get portrayed in this particular uh, diagram. The, this pictorial representation of this non-linear uh, support vector mechanism design is going to be consisting of a philosophy. 
first we must observe that if we have take a configuration of the data point that cannot be separated by a linear decision boundary in the input space. One can map the same point into a high dimensional feature of the space H where they will be considerably separable and then work with a linear decision boundary in the space. This is going to be shown in this particular diagram okay, which have been shown over here. A non-separable classes under this particular non-linear map pi becomes separable into a high definitional or high dimensional feature space. The inner product is in the high dimensional uh, feature space or computable using the kernel function into the input space. Hence, the points never require to be actually mapped nor mapping requirement to be known over there. This is going to be a low dimensional X space class 1 and class 2 data and a linear separating boundary which is going to be applied in a feature space maps to a non-linear boundary of this particular X space that is going to be providing the particular process from a kernel function evaluation into an inner product feature vector as like this. If you are going to see about the difference which is going to be easily identify that one. So, which is going to be providing a high dimensional feature space. So, this is going to be shown in this particular picture. Let me discuss about what actually the kernel function evaluation does. Note that the x value of this training data appears in the as in terms of h i h suffix i j of this dual lag ranging of this computation of the optimal bias or it may be in the final decision function only in the form of a dot matrix x i dot x j as we already aware about that already we have come across about that x of i dot x of j this data are going to get present over there which is going to be made into a dot function will be present over there. This is to satisfy that the only operation that is performed on the x values of the particular training data which is going to be involves taking dot matrix. Suppose we could find the kernel the function of k which are going to apply about the function of k of x i dot x j then then such that this kernel function which is going to satisfy this particular condition which is going to take the condition of k of x i comma x j is equal to particular pi of x i dot pi of x j which is going to have a summation of l is equal to 1 to infinite of this particular parameter. Okay, such a way it is going to be get present over there that we could use this particular kernel function directly into the support vector machine training equations without even knowing what the mapping is going to be get present over there on. This is an amazing fact that what is means uh, it is instead of directly we can allow us to use this kernel function into our equations without knowing the knowledge of the mapping. This is an amazing fact that what it means is that instead of having to perform the mapping of x i dot x j into a feature space and then compute their inner products just plug x i comma x j into the kernel function and we have the same answer which will be get present over there. This is going to be a completely the need of the map or to even know the mapping function. This is an amazing fact which is going to be present in the kernel function. Let me continue the next one an example for computing the feature space inner product via kernel function. So, the following if you are going to see about this the following example should help the clarity of this idea by considering the set of nominals in the x up to a certain degree. For simplicity we are going to have an order a degree of level which is going to be x is equal to small x capital X is equal to small x assume that capital X is equal to small x to be one dimensional with the value 
pi of x is equal to 1 comma x comma x square comma 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 x etc up to x to the power of m with m being some very large number if we choose a1 is equal to 1 and l is equal to 0 comma m then the decision surface which is linear in the component of this particular parameter pi which becomes a polynomial in the x for example the inner products are going to be get present over there so the inner products are going to be get providing with the value of pi of x into pi of y is equal to 1 comma x comma x square to the power etc to x to the power of m which is a polynomial of degree m in the input space for m very large value this expressions can be become difficult to compute hence i am going to given the value very easily like this so computing this in this high dimension can become a computationally very expansive too okay so that we can come to know about that it's an example of computing the feature space inner product via the kernel function which is going to be providing a polynomial of degree value up to m as a larger value we'll continue this in the next video thank you for watching this thank you